Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 15th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see the next frontal system. It is now coming on shore here, western BC, Washington, Oregon. But then we've got a pretty chilly air mass that's going to swing through starting on the day Wednesday. And we have a stronger storm system out here across the Gulf of Alaska. It's going to point in an atmospheric river at western BC, potentially western Washington, maybe a little bit further south as well and we'll take a look at those details as we go through the video here this morning take a look at the frontal system right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery and you can see we're picking up some light rain across the region and again the bigger pattern change is coming with the colder air aloft out across the gulf of alaska and then the stronger system as we go on in towards the weekend coming up taking a look at seattle yesterday 66 61 is the average high for the time of year officially 200 of an inch of rain more is coming of course with these next few systems also we're at eight tenths of an inch right now we average close to four inches for the month of october taking a look at spokane and eastern washington here you can see ritzville cooling down uh from uh, tuesday through thursday coming up here you can see the temperatures dropping off for a lot of areas up to 20 degrees here so definite pattern change on the way some mountain snowfall across the cascades of Idaho, western montana british columbia some of eastern oregon also is likely on its way with this very cold air aloft moving across the region you can see medford oregon talking about the precipitation coming in or some of these snowballs dropping down towards 4500 feet you could get some slushy accumulations on some of the passes out there so heads up for that and this is for western montana the idaho panhandle check it out you can see the pattern change confidence is very high coming in here and we're going to drop these temperatures down and some snow is going to start flying for the highest terrain you can see for portions of western montana here missoula montana national weather service talking about the snow levels dropping down towards 3500 feet um, I grabbed this weather station here near Snoqualmie Pass. I highly recommend this station, especially for the price. You can see all the stations out here, and you can click on them and see everybody else's individual locations. You can see the wind updates every few seconds. Got a lightning detection system. The sun is rising. You can see the solar radiation start to register. And you can click on this information here, and you can graph it for yourself. You can see the, da the daily UV index in this case. But yeah, if you want one of these stations, click on the link down below to save 10% off. So looking at significant wave height and direct if we're going to the coastal areas, watch out for those waves. Don't turn your back on the ocean. A little bit of a break here before the system on Wednesday brings another bump in that wave activity here. And then this stronger storm really bringing some big waves towards Haida Gwaii, Southeast Alaska, Vancouver Island. And eventually this is going to bring an increase in the wave action across some of Washington and Oregon as well. And then we'll see what is to come in the future after that. Now, taking a look here at uh, the European, as of last night, Gulf of Alaska low. Here goes our weak frontal system as we go through the day today. But Wednesday is a bit stronger and a lot more cold air. A lot will be rolling through as we go through the day Wednesday. We're going to convergent zone activity there is thunderstorm potential as well we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail here tomorrow morning but we're going to have uh, some cooler air aloft that's going to spawn some of the snow for the higher terrain again the possibility of some thunderstorm activity and then you can see this stronger storm develop out over the gulf of alaska uh, pretty impressive atmospheric river here early season one pushing into western british columbia you can really see it hammering vancouver island and look at these six hour chunks i'm scrolling through here pretty impressive precipitation rates likely to fall especially across southwest bc and vancouver island that eventually uh, starting to march down across washington and oregon as we head on in towards sunday night which would be shown there if we take a look at the GFS, this is what's known as integrated vapor transport. So this is how we measure atmospheric rivers. It's based on duration and the strength of this integrated vapor transport. And you can see we could be looking at a cat three, maybe even a little bit locally higher cat four for some areas. The GFS a little bit more progressive with the front and gets it out of the area a little bit quicker than what the European is showing. But you can see a pretty impressive plume of moisture that is known as an atmospheric river here. More on that here in a moment if you want to know more about atmospheric rivers. Now let's take a look at the European model. There goes our frontal system. The much colder air mass rolls through the area. Then that next atmospheric river sets up shop. And you can kind of see it bounce around and do the funky chicken here a little bit on the Pacific Northwest before it finally starts to pass through as we go towards the end of the weekend. Now looking at temperatures a lot, I did want to show this. Here's 500 millibars. This is uh, the GFS model here. And we're rolling through the day Wednesday. You can see the very cold air mass just launch and blast down across Pacific Northwest. Then you see that warmer air aloft in advance of that next atmospheric river pouring into western British Columbia and eventually down across Washington and Oregon again as we go through this upcoming weekend. 
taking a look at precipitation, this is a total precipitation in the 50th percentile and the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. These are ensemble means here. These are not cherry pick totals. And you can see as we go through the day Wednesday, we're picking up some decent amounts for the Cascades of Washington, lesser amounts across Oregon here, but still decent amounts. Some areas showing up over an inch, inch and a half. And then we start to bring that more potent atmospheric river into Western BC. And look at some of these totals popping off on both the European ensemble mean and the GFS as we go on in towards Sunday afternoon here. And then you can see it starting to include Seattle with some of that precipitation. And um, but again, the lion's share here across a lot of Western BC, as you can see, but you got to be really careful because you can see the North Cascades and some of the Olympic Mountains and even some of the coastal range of Oregon starting to pick up some heavier amounts as we go on through this weekend. It's still a little bit of model disagreement on just exactly where the heaviest rain is going to set up, but the lion's share, no doubt, is going to go to Western British Columbia. Now, we're looking at the Northern Hemisphere here. I want to explain atmospheric rivers a little bit because it seems like every time I talk about them, there is uh, some, uh, you know, there's some people that get a little bit um, excited, let's call it, about the term atmospheric river. It's nothing that unusual. They're ongoing across the northern and the southern hemisphere at all times. It's just a descriptor. It's been used by meteorologists for some time. And if I put this into motion, we're going to go hunt for ours. There is ours right here. There's the Gulf of Alaska. There's the Hawaiian Islands. You can see Greenland here. There's Washington State. And there's Japan over here in the giant Pacific Ocean. There goes our atmospheric river there. And you can see it pouring into the Pacific Northwest. But if you look out here, you can see an atmospheric river headed off in towards, you know, what is that portion of the Portugal? in Spain here. You can see atmospheric rivers elsewhere off across the Aleutian Islands. These are commonplace across you know, the planet, really, at any given time here. It's just when they impact portions of like the Pacific Northwest and they, you know, they're longer duration. They bring heavier precipitation amounts. It can bring some warm air into areas that just had some new snow and it can melt snowfall and all kinds of stuff and cause river flooding, things like that. So that's why we call them atmospheric rivers is because that's what it looks like here. I mean, if you want to come up with your own definition for it, then you can bring that up and bring it to your local scientists there and maybe they'll start to put it in some scientific journals here. But it's just a descriptor here and these are always ongoing across the northern and the southern hemisphere and the entire planet. Now looking at total snow, 10 to 1 ratio. Uh, as we go through the day Wednesday, here's Wednesday afternoon. Look by Wednesday night, the snow starts flying across some of the Cascades. The snow levels are probably going to be right at or above Snoqualmie Pass, Stevens Pass, better chance of some accumulating snowfall here. And then as we go through the day Thursday, you can see that cooler air kind of moving across the Intermountain West. Some snow for the higher terrain of Oregon, Idaho Panhandle. Looks like Yellowstone's going to get a nice shot of snow. Western BC, some of the Rocky Mountains there also. And then that next system rolls in here as we go towards the weekend. And you can see it does... A little bit of snow for the higher terrain there as we go on in towards Sunday here. But yeah, early season snowfall here. And again, you could see some slush on I-90 at times. Better chance across Highway 2. Watch out. You're going back and forth. You guys know the drill starting Wednesday afternoon. Now taking a look at composite reflectivity. In fact, let's update this because I believe the NAM is running right now. The 12Z is going. Here we are going through the day today. This is about 11 a.m. Here's noon. And you can see some light precipitation moving across the area. It's not a lot, but this will start to... Uh, traverse the Cascades and on into eastern portions. You can see the colder air aloft starting to arrive and some you know, moderate showers rolling in here at times as we go through the day. Wednesday, there's going to be convergent zone activity, mainly north of Seattle. Thunderstorm potential with that. Look at some of these heavier showers moving on in towards the Washington coast as we go on in through Wednesday evening and the nighttime period. You can see some of these heavier showers out there arriving with that colder air aloft. So you can get some nice you know, snowfall amounts across the higher terrain localized. And then we go on into the end of the run here. It's about Thursday afternoon. You can see that frontal system casting across Idaho and Nevada here. Now, taking a look at total snow 10 to 1 ratio on the NAM 3 cam, a little bit closer look at things. And you can see as we go through the day Wednesday, it starts coming for the Cascades. You can see Mount Rainier right there. Not showing a lot for Snoqualmie Pass. I mean, what shows maybe an inch there, but you could get some slushy accumulations there. And this goes through about Thursday. I'm going to update that because I believe we have the 12Z data in here. And let's see what it says. We're going to scroll out here. And it's pretty close here as we go through Thursday afternoon. So take a look at daily two meter min temperature. Watch out if you're across the back country here because this is Wednesday morning. You can see things cooling down a bit. But watch as we go to Thursday. Look at some of these temperatures really dropping off. And then by Friday, so then we start to bounce back a little bit here as we get the onshore flow from that next system start to roll in as we go through the weekend. But look at that Friday and Thursday morning across the back country, especially the Intermountain West. Things are going to get downright chilly. 
Now looking at daily two meter maximum temperature, and this is basically the temperature at the surface. Somebody asked a question about that in the comments yesterday. So let's scroll through here. We got today, 60 for Seattle. You know, it's still some you know, upper 60s here for the Willamette Valley. You can see one more fairly warm day here, Eastern Washington, but then we go to tomorrow. Look at this, Eastern Oregon, Washington, really dropping off those temperatures. This is Wednesday, October 16th. There we go, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe a little bounce back in some of the temperatures here, but for the most part, our very warm weather across Pacific Northwest has likely come to an end as we scroll through the end of October here. Now, looking at the 100 meter wind speeds, I do want to show you this frontal system coming in Wednesday. We get a decent westerly flow here as we go through the day Wednesday. You slopes to the Cascades, typical stuff there. And then we start to look off into the extended a little bit more. There's that next atmospheric river. It could cause some blustery conditions for Vancouver Island up the Strait of Georgia. You see these southeast winds picking up across Whidbey Island, San Juan's, maybe some of Skagit. At Whatcom County, there the southeast sucker winds. Uh, yeah, so we could get some blustery conditions here as we go on in through the day Friday through Friday afternoon, Friday night, as this next system is bringing its pressure gradient here with it. If we look at snow calmly pass, just want to point this out. It's going to be blustery out there. And as we go through the day Wednesday, some snow could be flying there. So be prepared for winter driving conditions if you're crossing the passes. And Quileute Airport, here we go. That system, as we go through Friday afternoon, you can see some of these winds starting to increase here. 40 miles per hour in the control and some higher showing in the individual ensemble members. Whidbey Island, this looks to be from the southeast wind there as well. Some gusts up over 40 and some of the ensembles showing up over 50 even with that system. This is Bellingham, something similar there as well. And Comet Viewing, not great coming up here. There's always the chance you can catch the comet between some of the clouds here when you get these showers rolling through for example on wednesday night maybe you can catch it between the showers as they're rolling across the area maybe even tonight if you just get really lucky with the break in the clouds i caught this one two days ago from my house south of seattle so it is putting on a pretty spectacular show hopefully we get some viewing opportunities over the next couple of weeks weather permitting of course now looking at this is what canadian high resolution model i do want to show the cloud cover as we go through tonight you can kind to see some areas you might get a peek through some of the clouds there and then as we go through Wednesday we're going to scroll off into where the sun would set and the comet would be visible right about here you can kind of see maybe you could catch a view of it across some areas and if you go to eastern Washington probably Wednesday evening you know you'll probably catch a view of it much easier over there versus places west Here's the six to 10 day. We got systems rolling in here the, through the October 24th time period. So that's why they have the above average signal here across a lot of the Pacific Northwest, a little below average here as we go through October 24th. There's the eight to 14 day though. There it looks like me be some troughing dropping down the west coast to the extended forecast we'll take a little more detailed look at that tomorrow and we'll watch that over the next few days because models are flipping and flopping as you look too far out in the forecast and there's the 8 to 14 day as well so anyway hope you guys are liking the videos click like and subscribe we'll do this all again tomorrow and i'll talk to you guys then